I'm Buddha and you're watching Dr. Guitar, a show for all you guitarists out there. In today's episode, I'm talking about my recent collection of funky old guitars. I love the blues and people like Jimmy Reed, even Muddy Waters, Holland Wolf, Hubert Sumlin, the early blues cats who played uh, electric guitars were playing really inexpensive guitars because that's all they had access to. Super influenced on Mason Stoops and mainly on Ry Cooter, they use funky strange pawn shop as they call it in the States. We don't have pawn shops here in Europe. I'm from Portugal. Um, but this funky looking guitar. So I started looking on Reverb for inexpensive, funky, beautiful looking guitars like this one. This is a Tysco uh, steel reinforced neck. This is, a, I think they call it Tysco, whatever. Made in Japan. Really beautiful flame neck here. It's gorgeous, this flame neck. Mirror, <laughs> a scratch plate, big card, as you want to call it. Lots of knobs, funky stuff. So I've been collecting these guitars in the search for ugly, inexpensive, cheap tones. Because I thought, the bluesmen I love used very inexpensive instruments from the States. In Europe, those instruments would be either non-existent or they are now really expensive or they back then they were not even a thing here. But we have alternatives. The Japanese was not a great alternative because it, it wasn't common to be here in Europe. But a lot of the German brands, Netherlands brands, came to mind. And, for example, this Famos guitar of Framus, of, uh, I, I'm guessing it's more like Famos because it's German. This is from 62, I bought it on Reverb. And I put um, Delta Lux pickup in here. This is by Gretsch. Very inexpensive, 60 euros, I think. And this is immediately Robert Johnson kind of thing, like a ch cheap really cheap guitar. I'm using the Amethyst by Jay-Z here, so it's out of sight, but it's here as the overhead. It's the mic capturing my vocal. Uh, so this is where, how you will listen to the acoustic sound. I have this tune to open A. This is how it sounds unplugged, but let me plug it in to my electric system. And basically it's, a, it's this Tone King behind me that is playing with my beautiful gem pedals, multi-pedal. Uh, the Tone King, I'll do a review on it because it's one of my new favorite amps. The gem pedals, multi-pedal, I did a whole episode on it. It's a custom board, gem pedals made it, made to me. They build to order uh, any multi-pedal, so it means it's a lot of their pedals built in one pedal board, one cable in, one cable out. So let me just tune this, because it, it has a tuner. All right, plug it in. It immediately sounds really cool and really different and I'm not even using effects, I'm just using the reverb on the amp. If I use like the Dalai Lama... Or... 
are, for example, using the fuzz. The compressor. using the harmonious monk tremolo with a little compression and it almost sounds kind of acoustic let me let me try to use the compressor tame down the sound so I'm putting the amp really quiet and we're only listening to the Jay-Z mic that is getting my vocal so you you hear the acoustic sound so first all only acoustic and now blending in an amp like a little of the amp Basically, it brings me a very old school, very broken sound. I'm even thinking of putting flat rounds here because it, it will make it sound even more, uh, less fidelity, but it gives you a super different feel. And why do I tune it to open G? You can see the guitar is really, really low. The bridge is really low. It can't be lower than this. And still the strings, so the strings don't, don't put enough tension on here. So if I tune it lower than this, like open G, which would be more normal for me, open G wouldn't get the tuning right and the strings will be too flubby. So this is perfect tension for me. And I also put an uh, old school strap in here and I can play it live. This is a very, very, very beautiful guitar, like flamey back. I'm just hoping you can see it in the picture. And arched, arched back also, plain top but arched back. I really love it, but you feel it's really a crappy guitar, but it's a great approach to crappy guitar. And um, I have this tuned up in, into open A. I have it always in the studio. I do some occasional solo shows where I bring all the guitars because they get they give me very different flavors. This Tysco we um, guitar has. The, the, the knobs, the on-off knobs, turn on and off each pickup, but actually the neck pickup is reversed, so this should be off, this should be on, and it's off, so no sound. Don't know why, but I'm getting used to it, or maybe someday I'll rewire it. Uh, so this is just neck pickup, and I'm using a little reverb from the amp and a little compression from the jam pedals uh, dinosaur because it's a low output guitar very microphonic which gives it a, a real character huge baseball bat this is like the neck is almost unplayable unless you play slide on it Middle pickup. And bridge pickup. Left 
Let me retune it. I'm also thinking about putting flat bounds on this, but it sounds good. So bridge pickup. can use both pickups, combine or all pickups. Usually they're out of phase. I, I don't remember what's the case on this. So neck and middle. Kind of a stratty thing. Uh, neck. So I said neck and middle, but basically bridge and middle. Now neck and bridge. pickups together uh, neck and middle just neck so whenever we engage two pickups uh, they lose highs and the funkiness of this guitars make it makes it um, all the quirks make it really creative and musical. I never swapped the strings, but it's it looks like a very hard thing to do, but I'm, I'm guessing, yeah, just taking this off. <laughs> so I have to put the strings from here. Then it has a tremolo, but it never came with a, with a tremolo harm, which I'm guessing it will be really hard to put in, but super funky, really, I love the, it immediately inspires me before I start playing, I'm already inspired to play this guitar. And I forgot to tell you, I'm using, for a slide, I'm using my self-made slide. I went the rabbit hole. So this is a real bottleneck. It's a Portuguese wine bottle that I cut the old way. I send it off so it doesn't cut my fingers. And this is the whole, the old way of getting slides. That's why they, they call bottlenecks, because they're actually the neck of the bottle used as a slide as a slide i love it and i'm actually selling some of my slides uh, my bottleneck slides on my reverb store which is dr guitar the name of the store so reverb.com slash dr guitar you can go and buy them there it's a symbolic price for the amount of work i put in but it's a souvenir if you want to keep it this guitar i use it as a low tuning guitar so again those funky guitars have a life of their own and they they tend to sound a certain way this i have tuned down to c and this guitar basically has this weird knob that gives it a lot more power so without it Not really sure what is it. It's passive. There's no battery inside. And basically, the, well, let me check. The tone works the other way around. So if you open it up, it's dark. If you turn it down, it's open. It's opposite. Uh, so you get to learn this quirky things. This is neck pickup. playing in open C. Create with some overdrive. This is the Rattler 
by Gem Pedals. Here's the middle pickup and the selector is this rotary switch we, that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven possibilities. So we heard knack, now middle. Let me turn the compressor so you can hear better. Usually these guitars are really, really low output, which is the case of this, so it gives it a very distinct character. So I use a little compressor just to boost the volume. Now this is neck and bridge. This middle and bridge. All right, out of phase tone. So again, my first out of phase tone. What I'm guessing is that the um, the middle pickup is out of phase with the others, because I know I have two more, or at least one more out of phase option. So this is neck and, and we heard neck and bridge and they were in phase. So it means that the bridge, the middle is out of phase with the others. So I have one out of phase here and then probably the other combination here. So this is middle and bridge. Put a little tube dreamer. I actually did uh, the last Budapest Blue single with this guitar, Walking Shoes and Thinking Hat. I just don't remember if it was this setting or the other one, so this is middle and neck. And this is the three pickups together. This was the one. This was the sound. It's a really inspiring guitar. Besides the fact that it has tremolo,
very smooth gentle tremolo and it also has the low tuning which inspires me a lot so I'm always looking for strange stuff in this guitar it's not a regular Strat sound or a Les Paul or a Tele sound I'm looking for funky strange sounds and for the more normal one which is not normal at all but it is kind of normal let me get it it's this Framos 1959 so this is Egmont uh, from 60 something 62 and the 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 crackling on this guitar is just amazing I'm just hoping it translates well I can't see it if it translates well but the aging is incredible because it's real aging it's not relic -y. and it's very inspiring after um, actually this is the Framos 1959 I think this is called the Hollywood um, and <laughs> the input jack is here which is a very strange place for modern days to be and it's a little finicky because it, it goes off sometimes but let me check it on this guitar I put flat wound strings to give it the feel and I really love it. They're getting older which makes them sound great. So this has a different, uh, an, another rotary selector and very microphonic guitar. This is hollow which makes it great uh, and it has a very funky tone and bridge c control so it has bass and treble plus volume zero means no pickup at all one means neck two means bridge three means uh, well two means middle three means bridge and one plus three means neck and bridge that's the combinations the bass control works strangely in the, in the opposite way let's hear the neck I cut all the bass all the bass turned off it's almost mid-range and the treble also works in a mysterious way so this is tone cut away This has 12s flat wound, well, 10 flat wound stand, but they're really hard. This is neck, this is middle. Turning on the chorus. It's a very brittle, brittle sound, but I love it to like the mute, reggae mute thing.
almost sounds like um, out of phase. And this is all the 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 strap has to go on this thing. So I thought I I would put something to to use the strap in, but it's all noisy. But I love it. It's just just the same. I love this quirkiness. And then neck and bridge. Okay. Just happened. See, it's really easy to for the the cable to go off. Neck and bridge again. So the hardness of the strings, the flat mount tension, makes me play way more in a vintage style like Jimmy Reed and all those. So a lot less bendings, a lot less Hendrix on my vocabulary, a lot more... Um old school Muddy Waters and, and Holland Wolf and Hubert Sumlin. And it's always getting out of tune because uh, it's not a super great guitar, but I I, I love it. Um, I, I love how it makes me play, and and this is basically an episode on guitars that inspire me and why I picked it up. So I'm, I'm trying to inspire you to go in after this because my thought process was this was the guitars being made in Europe when the blues was happening and when the Beatles were going to to Hamburg to play. This is something they could have played on because it's from their era. This guitar actually I had my friend from Royd's Guitars, refretting it, putting my Jeskar 55090 frets, which are medium thin tall. So this has new frets because I was wanting to play it more like a regular guitar, but it never sounds like a regular guitar. It, all, it has a magic to it. So I use it to get that inspiration. Either of these four guitars that I'm, I'm, I brought you in, uh, they were not expensive at all. So this was probably 200 euros. Um, 200 euros acoustic this was like 600 uh, the Yagman was 450 and this was 350 so all in the range of a squire but with a lot more mojo to them and immediately when I pick them up I get a feeling of I, I have to take something out of this guitar because uh, it won't give it easily it's a hard one to deliver but it delivers a very specific cool tone that i love well my friends that's it i hope you enjoyed the show i hope you have liked it if you haven't done it yet and you're liking what you're seeing here please subscribe and leave the thumbs up it's free it costs you less than a second and it helps you to suggesting my videos to other people and ultimately it helps me also if you want to help the channel and support what i'm doing here you can become a patron. I have a patron page where I have exclusive content, early access to episodes, and you're helping me. Talking about that, I have to thank my dear patrons for supporting the show. You guys are just incredible. Thank you so much for all you do. Please consider go to the patron page if you want to become a patron yourself and consider joining. I'm also opening some spots for class. I teach via Skype or Google Meets or whatever platform or Zoom or whatever. Uh, all over the world. I have students all over the world and I'm more than happy to have you becoming one of my new students. I don't have a lot of spots but I have to shout out because there's always people interested in asking me. So now I'm opening some spots for guitar lessons. If you want guitar lessons with me just hit me an email or a direct message via Instagram or Facebook and we'll deal with it from there. Also, I have a YouTube membership that is kind of similar to Patreon, so you become a member and you have access to special contact, early access to episodes, and my huge thank you. Pick up whatever you feel like, 
Uh, and I thank you in advance if you decide to help me building this and supporting the channel. Thank you so much. We'll see each other next week. Bye-bye.